Okay, welcome back. Have a seat. Uh, hope you have your coffee. All right, so now we're going to be adding these keynotes that we're talking about the last few exercises. Download, you know, download the project. It should be at your workstation right now. Um, download the project C19, sample building start, or the metric equivalent, and the, the keynote file, Mara keynotes.txt from the folder for chapter 19 on this book's webpage at www.cybex.com mastering Revit 2018. So we have to load that um, we have to load that file. So if we go um, into uh, view, right? Wait, Alty, keynote, sorry. Keynote settings, cancel out of the save, browse. Now we're gonna go to uh, where the, you downloaded the, uh, the files, right? I downloaded mine onto my, uh, my D drive and I have it, Revit instructional files, chapter 19 annotating, and you can see the Mara text uh, keynotes file. Okay, so um, let me just get that going. I just wanna read really quick ahead. This is an important note. Make sure you place them in the same folder on your computer because the path setting for the Kino file is set to relative in the RVT file. So they're gonna look for each other. Open the RVT project to begin the exercise. Cannot understand keynote line 0443002.82 stone masonry. Okay, well, it happens. Expand on that. Um, warning, Dr. Smith, warning. Okay, well, we're just gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to let that happen because uh, I have uh, to find a solution as to why that's the case. But um, it did load, right? Let's make sure it's loaded. Now, right, make sure. We didn't get we didn't get an error this time though. Let's try something. Give me a second. Hmm, okay, it's loaded again. I didn't get the error this time. All right, now to begin this exercise, to add the keynotes to an element in the project model, choose one of the three keynote types in the annotate tab. Then select the object you want to annotate in your view and insert a keynote. The sequence for inserting keynotes is arrowhead, leader segment, and then keynote. Similar to placing a tag, the keynote command, even the user keynote, requires an object to be selected to start the insertion sequence. If the object doesn't have a note already defined, you'll be prompted to pick a note from the keynote's dialog box. Figure 19.18 shows a sample to do this. Um, yeah, and, and we're gonna run into that. I, I looked through this exercise, I even opened up a whole bunch of other ones. And some of the materials, some of the elements have keynotes assigned and some don't. What I would recommend, and this is a very good homework assignment for you, uh, in addition to uh, downloading this project uh, sample file, why don't you go to the BIM object or, or go to a manufacturer's website that has uh, BIM objects for sale, uh, actual manufacturer's website that sells materials and sells components and sells assemblies and download their BIM RFA files or their BIM project files, whatever you can find, and see indeed if they're they're adhering to the Kobe compliance so that these keynotes are already added and then you can mess around with that. Now you'll be one step ahead of the next guy or gal who didn't take the initiative to do that. If I had more time, that's what I would be doing. As a matter of fact, you know I already do. That's what I do when the boss isn't looking <laughs> when the boss is pretending to boss. I mean, if they're going to play horse and pony show smoke and mirrors, then who, is, who am I to change the, 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 the methodology? Again, and again, this is all depends on the firm. All depends on the firm. If I have the luxury of being able to learn something while I'm working, you're going to be guaranteed that that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because nine times out of ten, uh, people are performing a function at a firm. And, and if that's how they're programmed to function, to so always perform a specific function, well then they're always going to perform that function. Unless directed by an external source to perform another function. So again, just a word to the wise, you got a long career ahead of you. How you climb the corporate ladder and, 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 and what barriers are in your way, 
and how you circumvent them to achieve whatever level it is you're trying to achieve, whether that be wealth and power, uh, peace of mind, uh, or just because you want to wear a really nice dress, uh, a really nice pantsuit to a meeting, um, is purely uh, up to you. So, again, I'm going off on a tangent. I got to keep these. I got to keep these short, right? I got to keep these short. Adding keynotes, and um, I'll, if I have to go part one, part two, part three, I will. All right. So let's explore this functionality with a quick exercise in which you and I will annotate a detail with keynotes. Follow these steps from the project browser. From the project browser, expand the sections wall section. Heading and activate the view named window sill detail. Go to the annotate tab in the ribbon. And select keynote element keynote on the tag panel. Keynote element keynote on the tag panel. Select the window in the view and then place the leader in the keynote. Well, that's the window. Right? 088000.aa. Now, remember, the sequence for inserting keynotes is arrowhead, leader segment, and then keynote. So, three clicks, right? And again, where these go and, and how they look are going to be um, important because you don't want to be too busy. You don't want to be overlapping things. If you can keep all these tags nice and neat, it just really makes for a nice, well documented, well annotated design. But as you can see, the crop region and the window is prohibiting you from having this text up here. Now, we can change that so that we can, we can put the leader up here. But I can e easily grab this over here and select the window and that's the first click and drag it over here. And looking for, looking for the, sec the second click, which would be to, um, um, again, I just me read it exactly as it says. Uh, arrowhead leader segment and then keynote. So the second click is leader segment. Now you can go up on an angle where you can try to keep it straight. And this is kind of tricky. If you want to just keep it straight out and have all your notes aligned on the right or on the left. And that's very, very, very neat, right? And some firms and some managers are going to insist that's the case. So if I click here, well, there it is again. There's the leader. It's the leader stop point. And the next place I click, is going to be where the actual note uh, extracts the metadata built into the component or the, uh, the window assembly. So I'm going to try to keep it right where it was. Except that this one doesn't have a keynote assigned to it. So I'm going to have to do some manual data entry. Now, uh, you'll see. Yeah, well, no, we won't see. Go to the annotate tab of the ribbon and select keynote element keynote on the tag panel. Select the window in the view and then place the leader in keynote. You will see that the keynote has already been populated because keynote has already been defined in the type properties for the window family. That's not the case unless I selected the wrong component, uh, the wrong element. Now let's take a look. I don't see it, right? Do you see it? I don't see it. So let's just make sure that I selected the window. Window fixed. Window fixed. Let's take a look at the type. Nope. Yeah. Keynote's there. I may have selected something else. I may have selected the glass. Let's see here. What, um, if I tab through here, if I kind of get the multiple element here, let me see. Maybe, yeah, maybe the basic wall I hit. Maybe I hit the wrong one. Let me just undo that. Actually, you know what? You could drag keynotes around by their grips to select something else. And maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get something else. Maybe we'll actually get the keynote to report. But it's making a liar out of me, so I'm just going to delete it and do it again. Keynote by element. Let me come over here. There it is. 08800.aa. Let's make sure that's the right keynote, right? So um, let's see here. No, nope, that's not what this one says. 088 is a different keynote label. Hold on a second. With the keynote, uh, you will see if the keynote code has already been popular because keynote has already been de defined in the type properties for the window family. Well, that's one way of checking it is to select the window family. Go to uh, the type and let's look at the keynote. 0888000.aa. It's a fixed 36 by 72 window. Uh, glass pane material, glass, sash material, uh, glass material, glass pane material, and the sash material is sash. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, that's populated. If it's not, then guess what? You're going to have to do it or hire someone to do it. All right, so that one is there. Now, 
you will see that the Kino code has already been populated because Kino has already been defined in the type properties for the window family. With the element keynote command still active, which it isn't, or is it? No, it's not. With it still active, click the wood sill, sill detail component and place another keynote. Well, that's going to grab. That's going to grab that. Let me see if I can take component. Hold on. Yeah, we can get it. Get it there. Now I'm going to cut lumber. Am I? I'm not getting. I don't see the uh, keynote. Hold on. I don't see. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. With the element keynote command still activated, click the wood sill component and place another keynote. And place another keynote. This time, the keynote's dialog box will appear because no keynote was defined in the wall's type properties. Select the keynote labeled 06110100.a1. And then close the dialog box. So if I'm to select that, we said come over here, right? But see, in this instance, being that this is over here, probably be best. I don't like the location of the leader line. I'm going to get it right in the center of that, um, that, that piece of uh, um, dimensional lumber. I'm going to get it right here. And then the dialog box is going to open it up. And it wants to select 06, right? Wood and plastics, wood framing, wood sill plate. 061100, which is the one they want us to select, which is applicable. So wood sill plate, and there it is. Now, and then close the dialog box. Go back to the annotate table the ribbon and then select keynote material keynote. Material keynote. Select the cross hatch material at the right side of the wall below the ribbon. Again, the keynote's dialog box will appear because a keynote value is not defined in the material's identity data. Select the keynote labeled 071300.a1 and then close the dialog box. The results should look like um, this, hopefully. When I say 07, I have to click one more time. Um, 07, insulation, 07. Now we have choices, board insulation, 071326, sheet flashing, 071820, concealed building insulation, metal wall panel assembly, sheet metal roofing. So this one is 071300. So I don't see 071300, do I? Well, no, hold on a second. Hold that thought, hold that thought. Um, again, the keynote style box appeared because the keynote value is not found. Am I stuck in the right material? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I see, I see 04. Am I in the wrong spot? Insulation. Hold on a second. Division 7, insulation. It does say select, select the cross hatch pattern, right? Well, that's not the bat insulation. That's the cross hatch pattern. And it should be returning me a number that I don't see here. I see a 300 series. I don't, maybe this was updated from 2018 to 2020. Let's just see what the note says. It doesn't give the actual material of it to make it denote what it is. It, you see, the keynote is actually. Um, 071300.a1 and it's um, no, it's not the same thing. In any event, um, I'm going to click something that's similar. So, um, concealed building insulation is probably our best. Oh well, no, board insulation. It could all. It could very well be that as well. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to just actually. You know what? Hold on a second. Prudence dictates that I delete this and select it. Right. Prudence dictates. Let's see if I can. I want to go into this wall assembly. My best bet. Your best bet. Let's go into the uh, edit assembly dialog box of the structure of the wall. Take a look at what it's made out of, right? Let's take a look. Let's take a preview of it. Well, as you can see, this layer Let me get where I gotta be. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is in section. Let's go into let's go into section. Into section. Let's zoom in here. Let's take a look here. Well, there's the there's the finish EIFX EIFS exterior insulation and finish system. Uh, so that's about all it tells us um, about what the material is. It's, uh, yeah, it doesn't really give us much more information. Let's me take a look at this dialog box over here a little bit. Open this up. Expand it a little bit.
All right, so it's an EIFS exterior insulation and finish system. That's all it says. Uh, and that's this uh, membrane, if you will, or layer of this wall section. And so in any event, this video is going wrong. Let's not uh, go much further than that. Let's take a, uh, a quick look again. And let's just, let's just delete this guy real quick and do it again. Let's go into annotate, keynote. Uh, keynote by uh, material. Let's come over here and click it again. Now, all it says is basic wall, EIFS elemental stud, but that's the whole wall itself. It doesn't drill into exactly what it is, um, what what layer it is. So we have to make a choice, right? We have to pick one of these Division 7s because the Division 7 that is shown here uh, isn't the applicable one. It doesn't match. It doesn't match. But then again, let's just, before we make any hasty decisions, maybe there's a mistake. Maybe that's a mistake, but we're pretty sure that's insulation, right? We're pretty sure. It's, it's not any of these. We know it's we know it's not a concrete layer, right? We don't believe it's a concrete layer. Um, saying it's a it's an insulation layer, right? So uh, I'm going to go with board insulation. O seven one three two six. I don't see the other the other um, one. So again, it could just very well be something that's changed in the model from from when this model was uploaded to the book's companion website and to uh, what the material actually is now. So I'm not going to fret over it, but you get the idea, right? I mean, this is relatively simple, but again, it's still going to require a bit of uh, digging down and data mining on your behalf. So my, my advice is to, that, and to do just that. And then you'll see the basic application of how you will denote your keynotes uh, in section. And this uh, applies to other views as well, but for now, We'll hold the video there so that if someone's searching for a quick solution on uh, how to, uh, to add keynotes, they'll be able, to be able to find one and not have to sit through a 45-minute video with some Looney Tunes guy that just came out of Manhattan with fucking brain damage. <laughs> so, again, um, uh, go out and have a cigarette. Go grab a cup of coffee. Don't be late and uh, come back because we're, uh, we have to burn them in that oil. We've got to get to the MEP section. We've got to get to a variable air volume systems and, and constant air volume uh, and make up air units and all those beautiful things that exist on the roof and up in the other machine room and in the mechanical room and in the switch gear room. We've got to get to impeller pumps and into fire pumps and automatic transfer switches and, and registers and lighting, lighting fixtures and underground conduit. And we've got to get into shafts and all of the wonderful things that fit within these building envelopes, because architecture is beautiful. But again, I told you early on, uh, I do also like the nuts and bolts. I do, I do, I do. Um, and I'm chomping at the bit to get there. So hold that thought, um, go have a cigarette.